So when I released Folon, I had a few different textures and I wanted you to be able to switch between them. I've never been a huge fan of key switches, so I really just wanted a simple button underneath every single volume fader where you could switch over to the other group type between the original sound and the tape texture that I had. So how do you do this? It's a little bit different to what you might think. On this channel, we've seen buttons in the past, but they work a little bit different when you're talking about turning on and off groups. So let's take a look at that today in our latest contact tutorial. Hey, my name is Steve and welcome back to Command Shift New. We talk about contact scripting a lot on this channel, so if you are interested in this at all, now is a great time to subscribe. I might just say that up front. And today is no different. We're taking a look at how to mute or unmute groups with a simple button. Now you're probably thinking, well, that's a fairly straightforward thing. I could declare a button like I've seen before on this channel and then an on UI control to change that button. Sadly, it is not quite as straightforward as that. It uses a new type of callback, the on note callback. And that is where you can enable or disable groups. So without talking about any further, let's dive in and take a look at how to create this. So first of all, let's declare a button. This is something we've done before on this channel, so check out this video if you want more details. But let's take a quick recap now, just so we're all on the same page. To script this, I'm using Sublime Text and then copying it across to Contact. Check out the link below though, because I've written a tutorial that can make that process a little bit more seamless, so you don't have to copy and paste all the time. It's quite a nifty trick. So first things first, I'm gonna create an on init, and inside on my on init, I'm gonna make a performance view, and I'm just gonna set the UI height in pixels to something like, I don't know, 400 to give us some space. Now we need to declare that button, set the label for that button and put it on the interface. So first of all, I'm going to declare a UI underscore switch. Now you can use a UI underscore switch or a UI underscore button. They both function and look pretty much the same. There are a couple of little differences. For example, a UI underscore button can't be linked with automation, but a switch can. But for our purpose, it's basically the same thing. So really a switch or a button is going to work. I'm going to give that switch a name. Just going to keep it nice and simple and call it button. And then I'm going to move that control by pixels to let's say 50 across and 150 down. I'm also going to make it persistent. That way if the script restarts or we repaste the code, it's going to retain the value that it was on before. None of this is new if you've watched that video before on buttons, so check the link below if you've missed it because that will get you back up to speed. It's also part of a much bigger tutorial on contact. It's a free tutorial that takes you through all the basics of scripting as well as building the instrument, so it might well be worth a check out for you as well. Okay, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to set the text for this button as well, and I'm just going to call it group because I'm going to be using this button to switch between two different groups. Now, normally a button uses an on UI control callback in order to do something. That would involve something along the lines of on UI on store control, and we pop in the name of the variable like that, and then we do something like set engine underscore par. That way when the button is pressed, it's gonna do something. Often you would actually surround that with an if function, saying that if it's equal to one, do something inside it like that, and then you'd have what you actually want to do inside those brackets. That's normally the case if you want to use it as, say, a bypass button for your reverb. You can turn a reverb on and off with a button nice and easy. However, changing and turning on and off groups requires something a little bit different. So let's check that out now. So the ability to turn on and off a group actually only exists inside the on note callback. The on note callback is when you press a note on the keyboard, it will trigger that event or that script. This is the only place where you can use the allow group or disallow group. Both of those commands are essential if you want to be able to turn off one group and on another. So in order to help us visualize this, I've basically created a quick instrument with just two samples, one in each group between two different textures from my Mellosaur. That's a free library you can download from Pianobook. So we've got group one over here with my soft strings pad sound and group group two with my soft brass pad sound. If we solo those up for a moment, group one sounds like this, group two sounding more like this. If I want to use a button to switch between these two groups, I can by turning off one group and turning on another group. And it does this by basically reading every time you press a key, the current code in the on note callback. Let me show you how that works. So I'm going to open up an on note callback. And of course that ends in an end on. And I'm just giving myself a little bit of space to work with here. Now, essentially how this script works is every time you press a key, it's going to look through the button configuration and work out whether it should be one group on or the other group off. Basically every time it presses a key, 
key, it reads the script, works out which groups should be playing and makes those groups play. So the first step is actually to disable all groups so that all the groups are off and that way it can read the button to work out which groups should then be turned on. So step one is to disallow a group and I'm going to use the variable which is built into contact called all groups. That basically means every single group is going to be switched off. So both of my groups are going to be switched off and that way I can then script when I would actually want those groups to be on or off. So I'll copy this text across first to contact and show you how it's working at the moment. So with that script inside there, we can see the group button, which is on or off, but that's not doing anything at the moment because there's no on UI control to tell it to do something. And right now, because I've got the on note callback with the disallow all groups situation going on, as soon as I press a key, nothing is playing. Both groups are completely off. So this is where we now need to enable the group that we want. And we can use the button to do this. Instead of the button directly turning on and off something, it'll just have an on or an off. It'll either be a one or a zero. We can then use the script to check the status of that button, whether it's one or zero, and then queue up the according group. So in here, I'm gonna use an if function. And I'm gonna open it up and say, if button is equal to one. So if the button is on, I want it to allow the second group. So I'll put my end if in there, of course. And in here, I'm gonna do allow underscore group. And I need to just put the group number index. Remember, of course, that groups are kind of from zero. So even though I've got group one and two, I actually have group zero and group one. And I want the second one to be playing when the button is set to on. So I'll need to put in one here because that's my second group. Zero base counting just takes you a little moment to wrap your head around it, but hopefully that makes sense. So in here, I'm gonna put the one and that's going to allow the second group. Then what I can do is I can put in an else command and I can say if it's not one, i.e. else, it's going to allow group zero or our first group. So now you've got an if function that will do one thing if the button's on and another thing if the button's off. Let's copy this script across and see what it does. So I've just copied it across and now we've got our group button on and it will play the brassy sound. But when our group button is off, it plays the soft string sound. I did have to go back and change this though when I copied my script over to begin with because I recognized I did a quick error there. I put it all in caps locks instead of lowercase. So just make sure that that is obviously the same name as the switch that you're declaring. But otherwise, there we go, it all works. So you could set up several of these buttons to turn on and off certain things. And in Foalon, I had four of them. So it would check the status of each of the buttons and work out which group should be on at each time. I had groups zero to four, which were all of my normal textures, and then groups five to eight that were all of the tape textures. The group slider worked for both the tape texture and the normal texture. And below each of those volume sliders then was a button. And that button turned on tape or it turned off tape. So you could really customize it. And all it was doing was basically enabling one group or the other, the non-tape version or the tape version. And you could then mix and match. I thought it was a really nice addition to the library and worth letting you know how I did it. So there you go, a very simple technique just using a button, but in a way that we haven't used it before with the on note callback to turn on and off certain groups. As I've said before, the contact scripting is definitely a focus on this channel. So why not subscribe if you want to follow along and learn a new thing or two. I have a whole tutorial contact series if you want to go and learn it a little bit more in depth. The third chapter of which is all about scripting your first instrument and then plenty of videos showcasing how I create certain aspects of my library through scripting and other techniques. So why not subscribe on your way out? But otherwise I will catch you in the next one.